In this video, I want to share with you the self-critique I did while painting my latest pastel titled Remembrance. Self-critique is an important part of the process and helps you stay true to the inspiration behind the painting. You'll hear me discuss questions like what materials I'm using, what was the inspiration behind this, what I struggled with, what I'm happy with, and most importantly, what I learned that I can take forward. So here's my process and my critique. Many years ago, I shot this photo of an Italian woman reading a letter outside of her doorstep. Her expression was captivating, and I wanted to tell the story of someone being transported away from the present by a memory. I'm working on a 16 by 12 sheet of Lux archival paper, and I'm using my Frankenset, which is made up of Holbein's, Rembrandt's, New Pastel, and Faber-Castell. I'm also using both of my Terry Ludwig sets, the Still Life and the Portrait. I knew the focus of the painting would be her face and hands, but wasn't positive what I wanted to do with the background. Should I keep it plain or add elements of the door? I had the door drawn in, knowing that I could completely cover it up if I wanted to. Because of this, I decided to begin with the figure and let that dictate what would happen in the background. I had the door drawn in and decided once the figure was in, it was an important design element in the painting. I began blocking in the background using the famous Ludwig eggplant color to mark the darks. And then I lightly covered the entire background with a lighter dark. All of this was laid down so that I could do a wash with water to even out the background, dress, and shawl, and create a color that I could work on top of. Sometimes when I'm not exactly sure what I want to do or I'm trying out a new idea, I'll snap a photo of the painting in progress and then put it into Procreate, a digital painting program. And there I can paint on top of it without worrying about actually messing up the, the painting. I've been playing with dynamic symmetry and recently bought Kevin McPherson's video called The Magic Grid. It's a really interesting approach to creating points of interest on your painting and knowing where to place them. The concept is new to me, but I did find it was really great for placing some points of interest that I hadn't thought about, like adding in some light on the door uh, to the left of her head and the knocker, and even though the light isn't in the photo, it really balances the composition. I'll talk more about McPherson's video in a future post. At this point, the block-in was finished. After that, the rest of the painting was refining what was already there. I toned down the reflecting red in her face and darkened the greenish shadow in her hair. I went tight on the face, thinking of it more as sculpture than painting. I finessed the softness of the cheeks and the line of the mouth. I broke up some of the edges of her outline, glazing some of the color from her figure into the surroundings. I used the long edge of the pastel to pull away and lift up from the figure as it went into the background. I think it adds to the feeling of losing herself in the letter. I also added a notch in the paper. It's a small thing, but it speaks of a letter that's been read many times. I kept her hands simpler than her face, looking for the angles of the wrist and the knuckles and playing those up slightly. I wanted her to hold the paper gingerly, so I kept the hands slightly lighter against the paper. I'm not sure how successful that was, and perhaps I'll darken the fingers just a bit more where they meet the paper. My struggle in this painting was getting the lines of the door. For the life of me, I cannot draw a straight line. 
it took many tries to get that right. The color is much more subtle in real life than it is in the photograph. The camera can either read color or value, and it's amping up the reds, which I so carefully ish down. Here you can see me adding a glaze of green, the complement of the red, to take it down a notch. I also added quite a bit of violet into the yellow that's on her shawl, and again, that ished it down, and it also gave a feeling of the texture of the cloth. Overall, I'm happy with this painting. Starting with the face and the figure guided me in how I wanted to portray the background. I was really excited about using the magic grid to help me plot some points of interest. For this, I used the grid once the painting was in place, but going forward, I'm going to try and actually draw the grid in first and then do my composition into it. And I'll let you know how that goes. So there's my process and my critique of my pastel painting, Remembrance.